Thalapati, M.K. Stalinji, Mrs. Kani Mohi, MP and Deputy General Secretary of DMK, General Secretary of International Congress, Priyanka Gandhiji, MP and Working President of NCP, Mrs. Supriya Suleji, Former Chief Minister of Jammu Kashmir, Chairperson PDP, Mrs. Mehbuba Muftiji, Former MP and Pilot Bureau Member of CPIM, Mrs. Vashni Aliji, National Congress, National Executive Committee Member, CPI, Mrs. Ani Rajaji, Minister of Food and Consumer Protection, Government of Bihar, Mrs. Leshi Singhji, Deputy Speaker, Delhi Assembly, and National Executive Member of AAP, Mrs. Raki Bidlinji, former MP and uh, National Spokesperson, AITC, Mrs. Shushmita Devji, and all the dignitaries who are present in front of me, all the distinguished guests, and my fellow citizens of India. This day and moment have been 100 years in the making as today we celebrate the, cent the centenary of the DMK Patriarch and a great son of soil, a towering leader, a progressive ideologue, a politician par excellence, and the founder of the politic political movement for the betterment of India and all its people, respected Sri M. Karunanidhi ji. He was popular as Kalanyar and Muttamind Aranyar. Kalanyar was the title. Kalanyar was the title of Tamil politics. His life was marked by a relentless struggle for social justice and the empowerment of the marginalized communities, minorities, OBC, SESTs, and especially women. His political journey was an unending test to eradicate social inequalities. He championed the cause for women's rights, advocating for gender equality in a deeply patriarchal society. He did affirmative action to support oppressed communities and minorities. He was a great advocate of increased state autonomy and accountability in the Indian federal structure. He pursued the Rajamanar Committee's report. Minister, Mrs. Indra Gandhi ji, and the Chief Ministers got the right to hoist the flags on Independence Day. Kalina's life was dedicated to the pursuit of social justice, an endeavor that remains even more relevant and inspiring today. His vision was rooted in the principles of equality, fairness, and inclusivity. He believed that society could only prosper when every citizen, regardless of their background, was given equal opportunities to thrive. Under his leadership, the DMK pioneered several progressive policies that aimed to uplift the marginalized and oppressed sections of the society. His government increased the reservation for backward classes from 25 to 31 percent and from 16 to 18 percent for SESTs, established the first ministry for the welfare of the backward class. As a member of parliament and a woman, I am deeply honored to address you all on this special occasion and I want to focus on the three fundamental aspects of the vision for India. An unyielding commitment to social justice, tireless effort to protect the dignity of each individual and untiring advocacy for women's rights. Samajwadi Party remains committed to these ideals as we cherish and uphold an unwavering commitment to protecting the respect and dignity of every individual. In a diverse India, the protection of regional, social, cultural and linguistic identities 
is of paramount importance as it is the integral to the identity and pride of each and every individual. Leadership in this regard is not about exclusion, but rather about pluralism and diversity. Celebrating the unique cultural tapestry that is India. Now I turn my attention to the third crucial aspect of our vision, a deep sense of commitment to women's right. We all must be a true feminist today, advocating for gender equality, women's education and upliftment, policies that have always been advocated and implemented by the Samajwadi Party in Uttar Pradesh, found home and expression in Tamil Nadu under Kalingnar. He raised girls' marriageable age, provided women vantha reservations in the government jobs, local body elections, property rights, subsidized loans, financial assistance to widows, marriage, intercaste marriages, self-help groups, vocational training programs, free power and gas connections, and rise at rupees one, and many much policies. We must recognize that women's economic empowerment is not only a matter of individual dignity, but also a path towards overall societal and economic progress.